And uh, first of all, turn to President Kagame. You've been listening keenly to what uh, has been uh, said from the panel. Would you care to comment on any of the issues that have been uh, brought on the table uh, before we go back to dig a little bit deeper? But you've been listening uh, very carefully the que on these questions that have been raised here. Yes. Well, thank you. Why, why, why don't you sit down, sir? <laughs> I've been sitting down for a long time. I want to rest from that. But let me say, I followed the, what was being discussed for the short time I've been here. And I think there are good points being made uh, about conflicts, the causes, and possible way forward in resolving them. But of course, what is very common is there will be old conflicts and all the causes of the conflicts. There will also be new kinds of conflicts, as, as has been said, and possibly new causes as well. But what has been mentioned by the panelists that is important, the constant should be the kind of politics, the kind of leadership, the governance in place, so that these old or emerging causes or conflicts can be resolved. This is, this is key. And another way to look at it also and raise a question which we must answer is for so long, We've discussed conflicts, causes of conflicts, and actually have quite a good idea as to what is needed for such a conflict to be resolved. Now, the question is, if we have analyzed conflicts and the causes, if we really have a good idea what all this constitutes, then what? So it comes, therefore, to the point that the leaders, therefore, should be there to deal with these problems. And here I'm not even proposing that there is one leader who can resolve conflicts alone or that there is even a silver bullet for these conflicts. Therefore, it's the management of all these processes and what we have identified to be the root causes. But of course, when it comes to Africa, I'm sure many people in this audience will have made the same observations. I think we must take responsibility and accept our failures in dealing with these matters. For example, relating to what uh, President Obasanjo has just said, on the case of Boko Haram, or you can use that for many other cases. For me, when I'm watching on television, and I find our leaders who should have been working together all along to address these problems that commonly affect their countries, wait until they are invited to go to Europe <laughs> to sit there and, 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 and just... You know, it's like they are made to sit down and address their problems. Why does anybody wait for that? What image does it even give about us, about Africa? In fact, the image it gives is that we are not there to even address these problems. We are there for a photo opportunity. We are happy to sit there in Paris with the president of France and, address, and just talk about addressing problems. <laughs> It doesn't make sense that our leaders cannot get themselves together 
to address problems affecting our people. It doesn't make sense. Of course, I'm saying this painfully on the other hand that uh, well, I, I look forward for the time when I can be like the two former presidents. I think they are more free to say things than I do. <laughs> In, in being where they are and me being where I am. So I tend to remain with some reservations about what I have to say because, uh, but I think there is that serious problem. African leaders, we don't need to be invited anywhere to go and address our problems without first inviting ourselves to come together to tell each other the actual truth that we must tell each other about our serious problems. So, I mean, again, <laughs> look at the problem of South Sudan, indeed. The first problem was about this country and the people there wanting to be independent. They got independence. Now that turned into a problem. How? So you have one war being fought, wedged to be independent, then you have to fight another when you have achieved independence. Just fighting among themselves. Why? So some of these underlying root causes should and could have been addressed by the leaders there. Whatever happened, whoever was wrong, that's not the issue. It is still the responsibility of leaders if they can't resolve the matters themselves. Wait, why not? Why not call up upon neighbors to say, come and help? We have a problem here. Maybe there is a problem between the president and the vice president. And if they can't resolve it, and each one thinks he's the one who is right and the other is wrong, and they are going to divide the army and the government and everybody else to go on either side and start fighting, well, I think in between the time that starts and when it actually happens, Something can be done, but it has to be leaders to work towards that and avoid the catastrophe that like we are seeing or have seen or that has already happened in South Sudan. But of course, the, the unfortunate part is that uh, the most majority who suffer are the Ordinary innocent people. people who have nothing to do with it women, children, and even many men are innocent in that <laughs> situation. <laughs> so this is, uh, I, I, I'm not giving answers, probably I'm raising more questions than, uh, or adding to others that have been raised. So for the time being, let me stop here. Thank you. Thank you.